Um, well, first of all, I was meant to be virtual, so I'm very pleased to see so many people here. Um, I'd love to have it be interactive because I'm going to say a lot of stuff that's going to probably sound somewhat nonsensical to some of you, so please raise your hand if you disagree. Um, just a bit of background. Uh, I, I was a hedge fund manager for many, many years. I'm one of these reform guys. Allied Crowd started as a charitable organization. We try to do uh, data and technology for uh, development organizations like UN, World Bank, IFC, and so forth. About two years ago, we went into the carbon offsetting space, and it's a bit of a, uh, an interesting story. We were doing some work for UN in Burkina Faso, and there was a coup, and there's just been another one. But um, we saw these things called carbon credits still being exported, and this was the kind of place where not a lot of things got exported out of West Africa during a coup into places like uh, Western Europe and the US. And, and, um, and we were like, what on earth is that? So we did what everyone else did, is uh, try to figure it out and start with all the obvious questions, such as why do some, some of these credits cost $2 and some, like my the, the former speaker, cost hundreds of dollars? How can that possibly be the same thing, namely a ton of carbon? So what we did is, because of the technology we had built for, uh, for uh, some previous uh, and uh, DFI clients, uh, we basically decided to aggregate all data in the voluntary carbon space. So, let's see, go next. Nope. Huh? Oh, oh this way, sorry. Clever. There you go. So that's, well, sort of spoke about that. But basically what we're trying to do is so what we're doing is we're taking all the registry data from around the world. We currently have 16 registries in our database. On top of that, we have between 450 to 500 projects like the one you just heard about in the data. Um, think of us as the phone book. We aggregate a bunch of phone books, and then we build as much data as we possibly can on top of that. Um, some of the data we build on top is we give an estimate of price for every piece of carbon. Um, so basically, any voluntary carbon credit anywhere in the world, we would argue we have a price for. Um, is that price accurate? We think it's uh, the data we have suggests that we're within 10% of the actual price 90% of the time. So that gives you an idea. Um, we have retirement details for 40% uh, of all retirements ever done, and we match that to corporates. Uh, I assume that might be another slide. Uh, actually, let me not do. So, as an example of what we do when we aggregate all this data, for 40% of the clients, uh, sorry, the retirements, we have matched it to a corporate buyer. What that practically means is that I don't know how many of you guys have actually retired a carbon credit, but the way you did it historically, you went to the registry site. In the old days, it was a fax. Now that you have a, you, you'll have an account, and you type in what you want to say in the retirement. Uh, account. Now, 60% of the time, it'll say the name of the broker, or it won't say anything. The remaining 40, we have matched it to a corporate. A great example is Delta Airlines, which some of you may know is one of the biggest retirement companies out there. But it's actually interesting, so how do you say Delta? So you can say Delta, you can say Delta Airlines, Delta UK. Um, there's another company called Delta Energy, so you don't want to use those, you want to segregate those. They even have an account where they typed it wrong, so it says Delta Air Lies, um, which is curious. Um, but what we've done is, so we've done that for about 800 corporates, and that's allowed us to say how much are these guys actually retiring, and are they retiring only shit credits or the great credits, right? So how do you figure out the answer to that? You need the underlying retirement details. Then what we've also done is we've said which brokers are currently broking which project. Now that's important, so earlier on I was talking to a guy who, who runs a bunch of projects, and obviously, he wants to know who brokes his, his projects. Now, he might know that, but he might also want to figure out who is broking similar projects to which clients elsewhere in the world. So if you're a forestry project in Colombia, you may not know who's broking forestry projects in, in Brazil. You may only know Vera, but you don't know Gold Standard and so forth. So we've done that too. Then what we've done is we've also, this is um, some of the stuff we love. Um, we build an alert system. It's going to come out in the next couple of weeks. Now, imagine you have a forest project, and uh, let's say this slide is the country of Bolivia, and where it says products is the forest. So what we've done for the 100 largest forest projects is we have literally mapped it. It's called a KML file. 
And so think of it as a GPS file. And we've overlaid that meteorological data so we can tell you live within one square kilometer where there are forest fires. So imagine you're a broker, you're a project, you're an end consumer, you, you'll get an automated email whenever there's a fire in, 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 um, in a project that you care about. So this morning I get an email that there are four, four uh, um, forest project where there's currently a, a fire. So in other words, if you're a broker, you need to know that, right? We've also done this advanced document search. What that means is if uh, those of you that are familiar with a lot of the registries, um, uh, it's virtually impossible to search for stuff. So for example, uh, actually the way we came up with it was the Tour de France, the, the cycle race, we're interested in offsetting some carbon. They were kind of keen to do it with something that had to do with bicycles. And lo and behold, there is a bicycle-related project somewhere in the world. And how do you actually know that? Well, you've got to be able to search a shit ton of documents. So we have um, thousands and, well, 5,000, I think we have more now, uh, documents where you can actually search the underlying documentation. You can also use it for slightly more complex stuff. If you search, for example, for IIR, um, that will tell you that there's a project where, um, where there are projections. Because what else, why else would you say uh, capitalized IIR in in, in uh, your PDDs. So all this kind of stuff we do. Now, the reason the former uh, speaker's project is interesting is because when you look at all this, um, well, think of it as the cutting edge stuff. So why are, why are people not in one of the 16 registries? Very often it's because it's frontier technology. It's not yet been proven. The methodologies haven't yet been created and so forth. So we started aggregating those, those uh, credits also. The reason that's important is because if you're a buyer of those credits, if you think about it right now, the way it works is you might say, um, for example, if you're Starbucks and you want to go carbon neutral, you go buy a ton of credits. Sorry, that's a bad phrase. You buy a lot of credits. Now you're Cafe Nero and you do the same. Right now there's really no way of measuring how much was spent by those two companies. So this comes back a little bit to the buyer stuff I was talking about earlier. And, and we can now uh, document who has spent what on which credits. The reason that's important is you can no longer get, a, get away with buying shit credits. But similarly, if you buy the super high-end credits, like the ones you just heard about, they can cost hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars in some cases. But as a corporate, what's your incentive to do that? If all you're trying to do is to say, we are the coffee chain that's carbon neutral. Right? You need some sort of an incentive to do that. And we're trying to give that to the various buyers around the world by actually pointing out the ones that, um, that are buying the high quality uh, credits. Actually, I, I wonder, does anyone have a wild guess who the best buyer out there is? So the buyer that is defined as the one that has spent most money per ton of carbon. So it's Stripe, the payment company is one. Microsoft is fantastic. Airbus is fantastic. I could give you a million guesses, you'd never get the fourth one. It's a Swedish bank called Svetbank. <laughs> So some of you run uh, carbon projects, go talk to Sweatbank. Why not? All this data, um, that's what we do. Uh, we'll keep piling data on top. Uh, we sell subscriptions to our data, and um, I uh, encourage you guys to, to give it a dry run. Uh, and then, um, yeah, any questions, by the way? Uh, I'm f uh, yeah, go ahead, sir. No? He's no? Oh, that's a good point. I should have said that. So we work with all the ratings agencies. So we aggregate all the ratings agencies on our platform, which, by the way, one, this is the old nerd, in, well, not, <laughs> the forever nerd in me. If you do a scatter diagram today and you take all the ratings versus all the prices, what do you think the correlation is? It's absolutely zero, right? Isn't that shocking? So at least do the thing, do a regression line, and buy the ones above and don't buy the ones below. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. Anyhow, so we aggregate it. Look, I'm saying I'm the phone book. I, I don't evaluate. Um, but obviously, we need the ratings agencies. So we work with all. There's six of them on our, on our platform. And if you, um, there's a new one starting up, we'll have those, those also soon. And do you give those analytics as part of the we, we do, yeah. There's, I mean, there's more data than you can ever. We give, it, we give our data to the ratings agencies and the projects for free. We want them to use it, right? We also want to be known if it's wrong. Which it is sometimes, of course. So, anyhow, that's it. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Lars.